Hello everyone, welcome back to Chemical Engineering and Aspen channel. In our today's video, we will design a shell and tube heat exchanger using Aspen exchanger design and rating. In our previous video, and the link of it will be showing to you right now, we had designed a shell and tube heat exchanger, but that activity is different from today's activity because in the previous example, we were given the information about the system or we know the composition of the system, but today, we are not given the composition of the system. We are informed about the properties of the streams which are going to the heat exchanger. So we will see how we can design it once we are not given the composition but given the properties of the stream. So in our example, we are given the information about the hot stream and cold stream. The hot stream flow rate is given to us. The inlet and outlet temperatures of hot and cold side are provided. Inlet and outlet pressure of hot and cold streams are provided. Estimated and allowed pressure drop is provided, and fouling resistance is provided, which we will be using in our example. This is the part which I was talking about that we are not given the information about what is going in hot stream, what is going in cold stream. But we are given the property that for hot stream inlet, which is at 593 degree Fahrenheit, we are given the information about the liquid density specific heat, viscosity, and thermal conductivity. And for outlet, we are also given the properties. In the same way, for the cold stream, we are given the properties for inlet and outlet stream. So we will specify first the overall information, means the hot stream inlet, outlet pressure, temperature, flow, obviously one of the flow because the other flow will be calculated from the formula of Q is equal to or Q1 is equal to Q2 and M1 Cp1 Dt1 is equal to M2 Cp2 Dt2. And then we will specify the properties and both these streams are in the equal phase with no phase change. So let's quickly move to the S1 exchanger design and rating and let's design the shell and tube heat exchanger. But before going to that, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Click on the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel. So first thing is to click on this new button and a screen has come and we have to select the shell and tube from here and then we will click on the create and once click on the create we will go to the environment of as per edr and by default dem prima type is selected location of hot fluid is shell side tube body which is by default selected we will see whether we can use the same specifications or not going to this process we have to specify the properties over here and what are those properties for hot side and cold side actually? This is the hot side and this is the cold side. The mass flow rate is pound per hour. Inlet pressure, outlet pressure is in PSI. The temperatures are in degree Fahrenheit. And accordingly, we are given the values. So, first thing is to specify the flow rate. So, that is specified over here. Then the inlet pressure is 114.7 for both streams. And the outlet pressure is 109.7 for both streams as it has been given to us in the problem statement. The inlet temperature of the hot side is 593 degree Fahrenheit while that of the cold stream is 527 degree Fahrenheit. And outlet temperature of the hot stream is 554 degree Fahrenheit and cold side is 543 degree Fahrenheit. Now you can see that all the sky blue boxes have been vanished because we have given the required specification to this system. In allowable pressure drop, this side for hot side and for cold side it is 55 psi while the fouling resistance is 0 0.004 for hot side and 0 0.001 for cold side and you can see the process is ticked now we have given all the required specifications in this box now coming to the problem definition in application options we have to change the hot side application from program to liquid no phase change as you know it has been given to us that it is a liquid stream with no phase change. So we have to specify here and say for the core size liquid no phase change. Now going to the property data, earlier we used to specify the composition by selecting some other option like SPM properties, com thermo, VJAC. But now we will select the user specified property and where we can specify it in the second part which is hot stream on properties. And now we can specify the required data over here. Like what is that data for, for the hot stream 593 degree 593 degree Fahrenheit 42.014 pound per cubic feet of density 
0.698 specific heat capacity viscosity is 0.284 and thermal conductivity is 0.05 and outlet 554 43.013 0.671 0.319 and 0.052 now it is not ticked because there are two pressure levels over here we have been given the values at 114.7 psi so what we will do we will click on this 109.7 and we will simply delete the set as we are given the information at single pressure only and now it is tick similarly going to cold stream properties and we will specify it as 547 degree fahrenheit 39.042 which is the density 0.69 specific heat 0.235 viscosity and 0.053 thermal conductivity and next is 543 38.961 in the same sequence 0 0.694 0 0.221 and 0 0.053 and similarly deleting the set from here so that it can be ticked now there is no cross over here which shows that we can now move ahead and how we can move ahead by clicking on this run button we will click on this run and we will wait until we get the required results obviously there are different wait times over here now we get the result which is input warning a default allocation of hot stream one to the shell side has been made it is estimated by the S1 obviously that chances of this being correct are about 55%. Potentially important factors such as fluid being hazardous, material compatibility issues could be involved. So this is the first advisory which has been issued to us by the S1 based on the properties of the fluid that you need to move it to the tube side. So how we can move it, we can go to the application options and here the location of our fluid we can change it to tube side. And then we will click again on the run button to see whether it is now acceptable or not. And let's see whether the S1 can give us the required answer or we have to make another change or not. Now these are the two results that has given to us by the S1. The number of baffles to in a shell side flow path is small. Some of the assumptions in shell and tube thermal model and temperature difference calculations are less valid than the norm. Also, the baffle ratio has been uh, given to us that it is problematic. If we go to the operation, then the calculated rho v square values are obviously exceeding. The flow induced vibrations are involved, and these are the different issues over here. So now we need to go to the console to resolve these issues. And in geometry, obviously, we have to change this geometry. Earlier in our previous example, we were by default. BEM and we had moved through it, but now we have to do some changes over here. And if I take you to the final part, that how we can get the required result or how we can get the final answer, because it is obviously the experience based thing. So we will keep it as bonnet, bolded, or integral with tube sheet. But since it is associated with the flow, this is one pass shell, this is two pass shell, this is split flow, double split flow, divided flow. So we need to split the flow because it is associated with the flow rate. The problem is associated with the flow rate. So we will select it as H. Similarly, in M, bonnet is selected. If you select it and you will run it, you will see again S1 will not give the answer. The correct answer is with N integral channel with flat cover. Similarly, let's first just go to the run and see whether we can get the required results again or not with BHN model. Earlier it was BEM, now it is BHN. Now the results have no issues, but there are still warnings which are involved in the system. So again, we have to make some changes. The changes which I am proposing here that you change the tube OD and pitch from 0.75 and 0.9375 to 1 and 1.25 respectively. Obviously, the unit is inches. Now the design 8, obviously, it has run the iterations. There are multiple iterations in the system and out of it, out of these design 8 is the best design for it, but it is 96% of the cost of the best design. Again, it is not recommended to use it. So we will again do the console and the next thing which we can change here is the tube pattern and then we will click on the run again to see whether we can get the required answers or not. Now you can see there are no input warnings, there are no results issues. There are no operation warnings and all of the thing is now okay. There are no issues in the system. So it means 
that we can use the design which has been reported to us after 22 iterations the design has been converged obviously i have cut a few parts because and now we can go to the optimization path to check the designs so these are the evaluated designs by the s1 there are 30 designs that are evaluated and out of which the seventh design is the is declared as the best design of the system and again we can go to the tima sheet review the s the exchanger again we can go to the mechanical summary to see the setting plan and tube sheet layout this is the setting plan this is the tube sheet layout we can go to the calculation details to see the analysis along the shell side and analysis on the tube side which are provided to us that how there is a variation in the heat exchanger so you can explore this result summary in depth to see or to review the complete exchanger profile in the system but this, this is the overall objective activity was to give you an awareness or a lecture regarding the designing of shell and tube heat exchanger when you are not given the information about the stream but are given the information about the properties of the stream once i'm saying not information about the stream it means that i'm saying that we do not know whether it is water or benzene or toluene or something like that but we are just given the information about the data which is density viscosity and so on so i hope you have understood all the aspects of this lecture if you have any queries feedback suggestion please provide it in the comment box and i would be happy to answer it so that's it from today's lecture thank you so much please do watch like share the video and subscribe to the channel also click on the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel till then it's goodbye stay tuned for more exciting videos on this channel